Jill Kristen Bierman, a 19-year-old girl of Bloomington, Indiana, as well as a student at Indiana University, disappeared the morning of May 31st, 2000, while riding her bike on the outskirts of Bloomington. In this video, we'd like to reflect the life of Jill Bierman, and we'd also like to dedicate this film to her family and the community who helped. On May 31st, 2000, Jill Bierman was thought to be missing after she had failed to return home from her daily bike ride. A few days later, her helmet was found on a Bloomington road, but yet questions were still left unanswered. Uh, as far as the investigators go, the community did just a wonderful job, especially the culminating event, which is out at the uh, search at Salt Creek. Um, I, I think that should be noted because you had people who, all walks of life, all professions, whether it be firemen, paramedics, search and rescue, contractors, um, Red Cross, uh, police departments from across the county, um, fire departments, not only Bloomington Fire Department, as well as Ellsville Fire Department, as well as volunteer firemen. It's been kind of amazing to me how many different people have been involved in the investigation, um, all the different law enforcement people, whether it's the FBI or the Bloomington Police or Sheriff's Department, conservation officers, um, and lots of volunteers too, whether it was searching or diving or you know, whatever needed to be done. The people suspected, um, had they been held to a higher standard, held to a longer sentence for the previous convictions, then they would have been in jail and this would have never happened. We always, we always got along very well. We had a great time. Uh, yeah, she was my daddy's girl. She, she always knew that even if mom said no, that dad might say yes, and probably would say yes. And um, she knew that she could manipulate either one of us, but especially dad, get what she wanted. My favorite moment was definitely when we would go up to Camp Brocious together and every single year we made it a tradition to stand in front of the big Camp Brocious sign and so we just have countless pictures of us you know, standing there every single year. We get a little bit bigger and it was just a really cool memory to have. Then the next day my brother and I got up and decided to make pancakes. We poured the pancake batter in the pan. When we were making... When when we were making them, we noticed that the pancakes were sticking to the pan. We would forgot to, to grease the pan. Uh-oh. We ate them anyway, and they were still good. What about her personality stuck out to you? Uh, the smile and her, her positive attitude on everything that she did. She was one of the most positive kids for an eighth grader that I, that I can ever remember. Uh, she was in athletics and extracurriculars. She was a great student academically. Uh, one of the most polite, well-mannered young pe persons I have ever known. Uh, and that's a reflection on her family and her upbringing and the kind of parents that she had. Uh, she was just an outstanding person in every way. I don't think she ever had an enemy. And of course that's what made it so difficult to think that anybody could harm her. Uh, Jill played volleyball for me here when she was a seventh grader. Uh, the fact that she was a good team player and she tried very hard, no matter what you threw at her to learn, she would pick it up and practice and, and try to be the best she could be. She had made a picture of Tigger and uh, it was out of a pencil uh, drawing. She brought it by my room and she said, Mr. Deborah, I want you to have this, uh, put up it in your office and you always think about me uh, when you look at this picture. Jill and I have been going to school together probably since kindergarten, but I don't remember. Um, meeting her in kindergarten, but at least since first grade, we've been in school together every grade that I can remember. Um, did Girl Scouts together, played on the volleyball team together in high school, and middle school, everything. Um, I have grown up with Jill my whole life. We have lived in the same neighborhood um, for as long as I can remember. We used to live in Short Oaks together, and we were neighbors then, and then um, I moved into Kensington Hyde Park, and then shortly thereafter she moved in as well. So. Um, our families have always been really good friends. We, have, we both have older brothers, and um, just through school and um, through the neighborhood. 
Um, I just remember fun times. Like we were roommates freshman year in college and we just had a blast. I mean, there was not a time when we were together that it was like nothing to do, this is boring, you know, we would just have so much fun and we were always laughing and having a good time. She was a fun mom in person. She loved uh, sports. She loved to uh, water ski. She loved to snow ski. Uh, Climb mountains. Do backpacking and mountain climbing. She loved to drive. Uh, sometimes maybe a little too fast, <laughs> but she did love to drive. Can you uh, just describe uh, Jill's love for riding her bike? Um, gosh. She... She felt like she was flying. She, uh, she liked it because she felt like she was flying. We started the cycle program back in 1996 and uh, for about two to three years I had uh, highly encouraged Jill's parents to uh, see if she could go on the trip and each year there was uh, a few problems with schedule conflicts and summer training camps and things like that. In 1999 she finally had the opportunity to go so she went out and bought a brand new Cannondale black and white bike and uh, she was set to go, trained every day on our training trips, and, um, and then she, she basically took off with us on the trip. Uh, Jill's house is going to be built in order to provide housing and support for patients who are coming to uh, Indiana University uh, Proton Treatment Center. Uh, they will be here for two to eight weeks, most of them six to eight weeks for their treatment and they need a place to stay. There's just no place in Bloomington that it can accommodate people like this and many of these will be small children under the age of four and it's very difficult to have a child away from home and take care of them. They need a place where they can play, where you can provide food for them, laundry facilities, a place of comfort. I think in the end, probably Jill's house and all the opportunities that will come from that as far as providing a place for people to stay while they're receiving cancer treatments, but also the fact that lots of people will find ways to help volunteer and help those people and those families. We have actually, we got about, we got $10 million from the state of Indiana, the Energize Indiana Fund, and the rest of it we've gotten through IU and Clarion Health. She had a really memorable smile and a really contagious laugh. She had a special gift. Uh, she was always smiling, always happy. Always had a smile on her face no matter what, you know, what was going on. So just a very um, nice personality. She was just one of those outstanding students in everything she did. She just drew people to her. She had a quiet sort of leadership about her and she just made you want to be near her. She was a happy person. She was a very wonderful young woman. Jill was one to really embrace a challenge. She definitely knew how to just let go and have a good old time. She just carried herself in a manner that I thought that here's a young lady that's really going to do a lot of wonderful things uh, later on in life. We miss her.
We hope this video was enlightening and adequately reflects the life of Jill Beerman. Love everyone and don't be afraid to tell them.